In today's tutorial, we are gonna be having a look at a Johnny Harris style animation. More specifically, I found this really cool intro sequence from How to Sell War video, which I thought was super cool and I wanted to recreate because it uses a lot of good techniques that I think could be worth. The main things we wanna focus on in recreating this animation and what we can take away from it is style slash direction, assets, techniques, and finally, sauce. So without further ado, let's hop straight into After Effects where I have a 1920 by 1080 composition set up at 24 frames per seconds to make it nice and easy for us. To start with, I wanna set up my background. And in this case, we wanna mimic that grungy metallic um, old school type of vibe. So I'm gonna create a new solid and I'm just gonna name this background up here. And let's pick a little bit of a grungy color, off-putting almost. This will be a pretty good color, I think. And then we can take our metal texture that I found from Texture Labs, and I'm just gonna drag it into the Assets folder in my After Effects composition. And then we're just gonna drag it on into this composition. And we can scale it up, down, whatever you want. And then we wanna go through the blending modes until we get one that is pretty sick. In this case, I'm just using Shift and minus or plus to cycle through the blend modes. This is the easiest way to get a quick preview and you just wanna find something that's pretty cool. I think the hard light texture works pretty good for this. And in this case, we're not gonna animate it at all. We're just gonna keep it still, kind of like the example. From there, we can work on building our first sequence because we have three in total. We have the first photo showcase with a name on it. Then we have the map. And then we have a third photo showcase, which is like a film strip. And we wanna create each of these and then we wanna transition between them. Starting off with, we're gonna lay out our first scene. So in this case, we want first our photo. So go in and I'm just gonna pick one of these random photos. I think this one works pretty good. I've picked a couple different photos to show you how you can take different styled photos and kind of get them to look similar. First off, we're gonna scale this down. We wanna put this over to the side a little bit and to give this a rounded edge, I'm just gonna select my rounded square tool, whatever rounded rectangle tool. And I'm just gonna draw out um, a nice little frame for it. Get it pretty close to the size of the image. Make sure that it's centered up and then I'm gonna remove the stroke and add a fill. And this can just be any random color. Let's do that. And then we can use that as a track map for our image. So we can always go in and round the edges more. If you go into the parameters of it and then go to roundness, you can scale it up and get some of that roundness in there. And I'm just gonna drag my photo underneath of our texture. And as we can see, it's a little bit dark, so you can either decrease the texture a little bit. And we're also gonna edit the image a little bit. First of all, I'm gonna add a tritone to it so we can get a little bit more of a stylized look. And I wanna go for black and white, but with a slight hue to it, maybe a slight greenish. And then we can add a levels. And I'm just gonna drag the tritone underneath the levels actually. And I'm just gonna play around with the contrast a little bit, bring up the highlights a little bit, and the contrast some. Just getting, getting an image that looks pretty cool. And I might even change this tritone a little bit to match the background a little bit more. So maybe go a little bit more orangey um, in the colors to kind of get the color scheme right. Cause that's a big part of the style and the direction is making sure that it's cohesive. So that looks pretty good. Now we can add our little text. So we're just gonna name this Mr. President. And I'm gonna change this to a almost black color, scale it down a little bit and pick a different font. So we want something that's a little bit grungy, has more edges. Satoshi's definitely not a good font for this. Azurite mono at medium looks pretty neat. And I'm just gonna move it over and kind of visually center it up. Also drag that underneath our texture. We are gonna duplicate this, move it underneath and maybe just say subtitle text, scale it down a little bit and make sure it is right aligned. And I actually wanna do the same thing with our main text, just to make sure that all of these are um, right al left aligned. And then I'm just gonna align it to the left to even them out on the left side. Using Alt and the apostrophe key, I can bring up my little grid and I can center it up um, as best as I, as I can visually. So now we have our first text, but we wanna add just a little bit of animation to it. And in this case, we're actually gonna do it super simple. I'm just gonna select my text and with FX console, I'm gonna search for typewriter. And this will give me a, well, a typewriter animation. I'm just gonna drag this keyframe in a little bit to about maybe one second. Then I'm gonna select it and use fast in apply that and that's just gonna give us a nice little text animation. We will do the same for the subtitle text. So you can just take an animator one 
copy that and paste it onto the second one. I'm actually gonna take the keyframes for this one, so select the layer, hit U, and then I'm just gonna drag it forward just a little bit to offset the animation a little bit, just to give it a little bit more flair. I think the only change I wanna make is for this main title, I wanna make it all caps just to make it seem a little bit more, I don't know, just give it a little bit of stylization. With the first sequence designed, we can finally hop into the second sequence, which is gonna be the map animation part. In this case, we have all of these files. You can use the AI file if you want to. It might be a little bit big to get in there. They also have a PDF file, which is what I'm gonna use because that'll allow us to keep the rasterization so it doesn't get pixelated without being too crazy. So I'm gonna drag that in and I'm gonna hit OK. I'm just gonna bring up this map and then if I select continuously rasterize and scale it up, you can see the quality is still very nice. Now it doesn't really fit right now because of the colors, but we can always change that just like we did with the picture. We drag that in and move it forward to about two seconds. We can start stylizing it a little bit. First of all, we are gonna select our picture and then just copy the tritone and paste it onto our world map. And right now it's pretty washed out. So we need to add a little bit more contrast. So if I add a levels, put that underneath or before the tritone, and then we can start playing around with these levels and get some contrast in there. This looks pretty good in terms of the colors. The only thing that's really left now is I wanna remove the background. So I'm gonna unselect the two layers and then I'm gonna add a color picker, color key, sorry. And then I'm gonna select the blue color out here and that should remove most of the color, just increase the color tolerance a little bit, drag it, before all our other effects and then turn them back on. So that'll give us a transparent map pretty much. And now we can unhide that. And then we wanna cut these layers. So just select these three layers actually, cut them. So it just goes from that to that. And now we can start designing this a little bit. So if I scale it up a good bit and turn it into a 3D layer and make sure classic 3D is selected. You go always hit command K, go into 3D renderer and make sure classic 3D is selected. And now we can start laying it out a little bit. Say we wanna tilt it on an angle a little bit and maybe even rotate it this way a little bit to get a little bit more of an interesting angle, lay it even more flat probably, just like that. This will be our main scene of this piece. And then we want to create the little brush line going towards where we want it to be. Hitting G and getting my little pen tool out, I'm gonna remove the stroke, remove the fill, sorry, and add a stroke, and we'll just make a red stroke for now. Click on a point that we want to use it from, let's say the UK, and then go over to Washington DC and create kind of an line for a marker connecting the two places. We can increase the stroke width to get a little bit of a thicker line. And we can add some roughen edges to it and that's just gonna give us a little bit of a boil texture. And you can play around with the settings until you get something that looks pretty cool. They have a bunch of presets. I'm just gonna increase the complexity a little bit. The border, that looks pretty good. That looks like very rough, which is exactly what we want. And now we can animate the stroke. As per usual, we're gonna add a trim paths, add that and then open up. And then we wanna go forward to let's say three and a half seconds, keyframe the end, go back a little bit and set the end to 100. And now if we add a little bit of easing to it, maybe a slow sexy speed and then play that back, we now get a line moving over. Now this is only one part of it. We still want the little X just like in the example. So we are of course just gonna use our pen tool again and make the X. And then we can copy our rough and edges to both of these layers. And the same with the trim parts. So just copy that and then paste it onto both of these layers. You can hit U and then we can see the keyframe. So we want it to start as soon as that thing lands. So just take your keyframes and move them forward. So that lands and we mark the spot. We can move this around a little bit, maybe rotate it a little bit. And just like that, we've got our marker that marks the spot. It's a little bit slow. So I'm gonna hit U and then I'm just gonna tighten up these keyframes a little bit. That is way better. And then I'm gonna offset it just a little bit by a couple of random frames. We can select all of these and then set the blending mode to multiply. And that's just gonna reveal everything that is underneath the layer. Now, as of right now, the line isn't animated. There's no texture, it's just still. So you can go into the evolution options of this. In the random seed, you can alt click the random seed. And then we're gonna add a posterize time and set that to six and then a wiggle. Let's do 222 comma two. And again, we can just take this and copy it to the other two and it should carry the expression over to those as well. And you can see we just get a little bit of wiggle in there, so super neat. And we can take all these layers and we just wanna cut them to the beginning with that and move it underneath our texture. Now, since we're not gonna be doing the craziest of map animations in this instance, we're actually just gonna select our map and then all our shape layers and pre-comp them and just name them map. 
three. So now we can hop on to the third sequence, which is gonna be our last photo showcase. So at about five seconds, we are gonna cut this layer and bring in our final assets. To end with, we have this little film strip, which I want to fill out. So add the film strip in there and we are gonna pre-comp it and just leave all attributes in main sequence. And I'm just gonna name this film strip pre. In this comp, I want to first cut out the film strip. And after that, I want to cut out the individual little pieces and then add photos inside of it. So I'm gonna hit G to bring up my pen tool. And then I'm just gonna mark around with my layer selected, of course, to create a mask. I'm just gonna mask out this. So now we have the film strip cut out, select the layer again. And still with the pen tool selected, we can now mask out the individual spots and then on your layer hit m and then for the second path which is going to be this one you want to hit subtract and that's just going to remove the white spot inside of it and as you can see it's not perfect so we can just drag these out a little bit so the white is not visible that is the most important bit and just like that we have masked out our little film strip so now we can drag in the photos that we want to showcase these three photos that i have left drag them in and I'm just gonna hide all of them except one and make sure I drag them into my assets folder. Now for this first one, actually all of them, we wanna drag them underneath and then we are gonna scale it down. Just scale it down until it fit in one film strip. Move that over this way and maybe zoom in a little bit to make sure that we get it nice and good in there. Reveal the second one and scale that down and move that right in there. And last but not least, this one and scale that down and move it over. And just like that, we have our images in them. Now they don't match. So again, we're going to go back to our main sequence. And from the first photo, we are going to select the tritone and apply it to all three of these photos. And that's just going to give us a similar look across because the colors will be the same. And now we can just go in and add levels as needed. So like this last one, for example, add a levels again, drag tritone underneath it. And then you can mess around with the contrast and make sure that it's not too overexposed or looks out of context. That looks pretty good. They look pretty similar, all of them. Now that we have all our three sequences designed and laid out, we can start actually animating between them and focusing a little bit on the source and everything that really brings it to life. One thing that they use a lot and I think is a very overlooked technique is match cuts. And in this case, we're gonna be using movement as our driving force, which is just a super powerful way to animate between different scenes without having to fully think of an animation. And oftentimes it works a lot better because it's easy to use and it just, it's so seamless and you can sound design it really well. First off, we are gonna take these two and I'm gonna create a void and that's just our picture and the mask for it. And we're just gonna name this photo controller and I'm gonna hit P to bring up the position. I'm gonna go forward to about, let's do 15 frames, keyframe that, go back to the beginning and have it come in from the left. And it doesn't have to be fully off the screen. And I'm gonna select that and add a fast in. And just like that, we have a nice little animation there. Might even do a sexy speed instead, just cause you know, we do like some sexy speed in there. We're gonna cut our photo right here. We've got the first scene animated, but how do we transition into the map animation? Well, in this case, I wanna use position and scale a little bit to create that match cut movement. I am gonna select all of these layers, so the text and the photos and all that, pre-comp that, just name this first photo pre. And now we can hit S and P to bring up the skill and position, keyframe that, go forward a little bit right before it cuts, and then scale it up and move it a little bit over to like kind of an angle so it kind of zooms in towards the corner. And we're gonna drive that into animating towards that and then following the position through that. We're gonna move these keyframes forward a little bit so that the new scene comes in right in between the keyframes. So now we can go into our map layer, hit P and S to essentially simulate the same thing. So if we keyframe our layer right here at position and scale and drag these two back where they link up with these two keyframes and then move forward to where these two keyframes come in, we can scale that up and have it show right over here. So it's gonna match the position right here or like match the zoom angle. And then I'm just gonna go one frame forward and keyframe all of this again and go forward and move this over and scale it up even more. So we have this kind of in our main focus attention. So playing that back, we have something that looks kind of like this. That is pretty good. I'll maybe wanna drag these in a little bit and then our second keyframes here, if I zoom in, I can take them and just drag them out a little bit more so we get a slight pause when this comes up. And then maybe as soon as it comes to about here, it starts following along and drag these over a little bit 
to match with the line drawing in. We can select our keyframes and maybe add a little bit of sexy speed to it. And now we have something that looks kind of like this. This moves a little bit too, starts off a little bit too slow, so just move them in a little bit. So now we have this super simple little animation. Next up is the film strip. How do we go from this to that? Well, this one's gonna be fairly simple. Again, we're gonna use a match cut. So just keyframe the position of the map, go forward a little bit and drag it out to the left and move that keyframe forward, just like we did with this. And then we can go forward to our little film strip and I'm gonna scale it up until it fills the whole thing and I'm gonna move it out. We want it to come in right here. This is where we want it to be at the end. So hit P to bring up your position, keyframe that backwards a little bit, and then drag it out to the left. Line up the keyframes again, select all of them, and add some sexy speed. So now we have this little match cut using motion. And now once we've gotten to the photos, we can add a keyframe right here for the position and move forward a little bit, and then show the second image right here. And you can always bring up your grid again if you want to be totally aligned that looks pretty good go forward a little bit again and then another position keyframe move forward and again drag it over and you can select those new keyframes add sexy speed to them and now we have this little animation here super simple hit n to end the composition right there and this is pretty much it for the main animation of this it still feels a very raw first thing we're going to do is add an adjustment layer so option Command and Y to add an adjustment layer. And then we're gonna add a push rise time. And we're gonna set that to 12. I'm gonna hit Shift Command Y to enter the solid settings. And I'm just gonna name this adjustment, push rise time. And this is gonna make sure that we can keep easy track of it. We're gonna add another adjustment layer. And this time we're gonna add a transform to get a little bit of camera shake. Alt click the position, add a push rise time, set that to six and then a wiggle. And we're gonna do 15,3 on that layer. Shift Command Y to bring up the solid settings and just name this adjustment shake. Just like that, we've added just a little bit of movement in there. And we want to make sure that on our adjustment layer that we set the scale to something like 101 so we don't get any corners showing. Already, it's looking pretty neat, but it's still a little flat. We can add a little bit more source. One thing I noticed that they use in the example is what looks like Warp Chroma, which is a plugin from Sapphire. It is paid. If you want the plugins, I do have an affiliate link, which will give you 50% off. I'll have a link in the description for it, but it's a super neat plugin. And my friend Sky, he's been talking about it so much. He loves it. And I've finally gotten around to using it. So adding an, another adjustment layer, we're gonna add a Warp Chroma. It essentially distorts the corners of the image a little bit and gives it some nice um, RGB split. So if we go into this, you can really see how it works. So clicking on the warp chroma, we can adjust how drastic we want it to be by dragging in these lines. And we just want it to be slightly on the edges. So we don't want too big of a gap between the two. And you can see if I drag this in and out, it's gonna kind of scale it up and down. You can get some pretty wicked effects. We just wanna make sure they're fairly close by. You can even rotate it a little bit to get a little bit of twist in there. So just like that, we've just added a slight bit of detail just like that. So we get some of that nice color in there. It works surprisingly fast for a plugin. I didn't think it would be this seamless to use, but it works so smooth and it doesn't really increase the render time by a whole bunch, which is super awesome with an effect like that. And we might even want to add just a little bit more, you know, I'm just, I'm kind of addicted to the look, really get that stylized feel in there. Next thing I want to add to this is a fake lens blur type thing. First, I'm gonna rename the adjustment layer to name this adjustment and just name this chroma warp. And we're gonna add another adjustment layer. In this case, we're gonna add a fast box blur. You can also use Gaussian blur if you prefer. I just like fast box blur because it's, well, fast. So I'm gonna set the iterations to six. And now when we transition between these two scenes, I wanna fake a little zoom blur almost. So I'm gonna keyframe the blur radius go a couple keyframes forward, set that to maybe three, go a couple keyframes forward, set it to one, forward, two, forward, one, set it to zero, go forward a little bit, two, forward, zero, forward, four, forward, two, forward, zero, and then hit U. Now you can see all our keyframes in here. And then we just wanna line it up a little bit with right here, put it underneath our pressurized time, and maybe even drag the chroma warp above everything else. And now we can play that back. And now we just get a slight bit of focus hunting, which just adds to the feel of like something like kind of like historic, important type thing. So we just copy these 
and paste them again and drag them over to our second transition. Again, playing that back, we get the nice little focus pull, which is just super neat. Last trick that I really want to show in this one is using fractal noise to get a little bit of some film dust looking thing. So I'm gonna create a solid by hitting Command Y and we're just gonna name this film dust and hit OK. And then we're gonna add a fractal noise and we are gonna increase the contrast and brightness a whole bunch because we just want little specs. Play around with it and you can even add a levels as well to mess around with it even more. And even the scale, if you go into the transform, scale it down until you get little pieces that look kind of cool. This might even be a little bit too, too many dusts. So decrease the contrast a little bit. Something like that looks pretty good. So in evolution options, you can all click the random seed and just do maybe a posterized time six and then a random, let's do 500. Now, if you play that back, we get this nice little look. Might even decrease that posterized time to something like three and that's just gonna slow it down just a little bit. Unsolo that, put it right above the texture and we can change the blend mode to something like add and that'll just give us a little bit of that dust overlay. If I take my film dust, duplicate it, add an invert and then put it on multiply and maybe even move this layer around a little bit so they don't overlap. We now have both black and white speckles, film dust looking kind of thing, which is super sick. And to finish off the look, we of course need a grain layer, add another solid and name this grain and make sure this one is metal gray or 80, 80, 80 for the hex code, 50% gray. Hit okay, add grain, the little effect called add grain, change it from preview to final output and then set it to whatever preset you want to. I like Kodak Vision 200T. We will increase the size to something like 1.3 and increase the softness to 1.3 as well. And we can decrease the animation speed to something like 0.5. And we are gonna add a tint to make sure that it is black and white. It's just gonna make it a little bit easier for us to work with because I don't like the colors in there, which just looks not so nice. And even if you turn it monochromatic, it doesn't go actually black and white. It's a little bit like purple and, and gr green. So with the tint added, we can now pre-comp it, move all attributes into new comp and just name this green pre. And we can change the blending mode to something like overlay for a little bit more subtle or linear light if you want it to be a little bit more aggressive and just decrease the opacity of it a little bit so it's not too crazy. And just like that, we have recreated the intro sequence from the Charlie Harris video. Super simple, uses a few assets which are easily accessible on the internet. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I just wanna say thank you and I appreciate you for watching. Hopefully you learned something new. If not, I at least hope you enjoyed watching along and just watch me animate. Um, but yeah, I'll see you again uh, next week. So uh, peace out.